Hi guys, Steve Rowe here. I'm in the middle of my uh, building a Fritz and Franz jig for the uh, slider and I'm to the point where I'm getting ready to attach the hardwood edge to to the jig. And normally I would probably use either a domino or a biscuit or something to attach this hardwood edge. Uh, but I've been wanting to do a demo, demonstration on the adjustable groover for the shaper or spindle molder and thought this would be a good opportunity to, to show how to get that uh, perfect fit for a spline using the adjustable groover. Okay, now if you're not familiar with what an adjustable groover is, think of it as a dado stack for your table saw except it has two pieces. They generally come in a series of ranges. These are all two-piece sets, but there are three-piece sets that give you a larger adjustment range. This particular set is, is the one I'm going to be using. And it, it can be adjusted from uh, four millimeters to seven and a half millimeters thickness. Uh, obviously, the, the width of the cutters this particular unit will go from from uh, 8 to 15 and a half millimeters and then this cutter here will do 12 and a half to 24 millimeters and basically these are two-piece cutters and you put spacers between them or shims between them to get the width of cut but the way I set this up is I want to measure the thickness of the spline that I want to use and if you do not use metric if you use an adjustable groover this this is the time to use metric it's like 592 590 591 looks like about 5.9 to 5.95 millimeters is the thickness I want. Now with no shims, this cutter will cut a groove four millimeters wide. They come with shims and what I do is from the get-go I'll start marking the shims and I use this to adjust it uh, uh, the thickness I want. So now I want to shoot for probably about 5.95 and and so I start at four, so I want to get, oh, here's one. So I'll put one millimeter. That'll get me up to five millimeters thick. This will get me up to 5.90. I'm going to try this. Generally, I'll hit this on the, on the first shot. But we'll see how it goes. So I put the appropriate shims in and then I'll adjust the groover or I'll put the groover together. Okay, so now I've got the, the width set. Now my spline has a width of just over 20 millimeters. Get that there. So I'm just over 20 millimeters. So I want to go into each piece roughly half of that. So I'm going to sh consider my my total thickness of this just so I'm, I make sure I get my two pieces closing up on each other together is 20 or half of 20.5 millimeters, which would be 10 and a quarter. Right now the, the machine is locked up. This is perfectly safe because the brake release is on and, and my, this particular machine will not start up. So what I want to do is measure where the arc is there. I've zeroed my, my gauge and I want to go 10 and a half millimeters and I'm 11 point one right now so let's put that thing a little deeper oh, too deep the wrong way
too far. 9.07, 9.36, 9.7. I'm at 10.44 there. Let's see if I can get that a little closer. 10.35. So I've got my depth of cut set up. I've locked my fence in position. Now I'm going to close the fence plates, making sure I do not contact the cutter. Again, turn it around, make sure you're not hitting it. Okay, this particular shaper, I've outfitted these Eigner integral fence, which has bridging that crosses the opening, and this is primarily a safety feature. So, sure I'm clear. So I've bridged the the opening in the fence and what that does when I'm working with a small piece it keeps that work piece from diving in toward the center. Okay now that the bridging is set across uh, the opening in the fence I need to set up my pull down and I'm more concerned about this hold down with the with the shorter piece so what I need to do is uh, to adjust this and just get it hold down. It doesn't have to, you don't have to put a whole lot of pressure on it. There is, there is a spring load there. But you don't want excessive friction when you push that thing through the cutter. Now this particular device also has a spring hold down to hold it up against the fence. I'm not going to use that on this one because this work piece is so short. It, it just gets in the way, so I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to be using this gripper uh, to uh, guide the workpiece or guide the uh, hardwood through. So I'm getting that hearing protection on, eye protection's on, I release the brake. Okay, let's see how we did. Oh wow, it's a beautiful fit there. And on this side. I am closed up completely and it doesn't seem like there's hardly any gap there at all in that spline joint. So. I'm perfectly flush on this side, and then I'll use a lifting planer to uh, mill that, uh, mill the excess off there. So anyway, that's the adjustable groover, and I'm really those those adjustable groovers are my most used shaper tooling.